So hi, my name is uh, is Dr. Christine Dollahan, um, and I had a rebirth experience. So the the earliest memory I have is is walking through this um, spiritual dimension. I can't explain it in any other way. It was sort of concrete, but it wasn't. So there was um there was a lot of energy, a lot of color, and a lot of almost like clouds around me. Um, the color was sort of bright. Um, like pink and 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 very warm colors, like pink, white, um, and I and it was very warm and it was very beautiful there. It was just so beautiful. I mean, I had not a care in the world. It was, I felt at ease, um, and I I remember seeing sort of buildings is what I could describe them in human terms in the background. Um, and what I perceived um, was that those buildings were training buildings. Those were buildings that souls were kind of training and getting ready for their lifetime on planet earth. And so they were making their, their plans for their lifetimes. They were, you know, studying spiritual topics and they were getting ready. So it was almost like, um, like a, yeah, like a boot camp or like a camp. And I had come from that and I was what I can only describe as, um, like walking down a path, but it wasn't a path in human terms. Okay. It was more like, you know, less concrete. Um, and I was communicating with somebody next to me who was a spiritual mentor. That's how I can describe him. He was like a very highly evolved spiritual being right next to me. And he was floating next to me or walking next to me. He was sort of tall. Uh, I remember him sort of having, like darker robes on, um, but very loving being, very loving being, but not a being that that incarnates on planet Earth anymore. Um, it was more of a being that had kind of evolved and was now helping beings like me, you know, get through their karma, get through their life stuff, get through everything. And so we were we were walking and the way we were communicating was um, via our minds. So we were telepathically communicating. And at the same time that he was communicating with me, I was really communicating with, you know, higher consciousness, God or whatever else. And I was getting spiritual downloads and spiritual, um, sort of truths about who we truly are in our nature at the same time. And so at some point, I remember kind of getting this feeling of like, oh, no, now we're getting close. Um, now now it's it's almost time for me to go. And I was getting very anxious. Um, and when I say I, it wasn't me as a person. It was more like my essence. I, I felt I perceived myself as like a, um, a ball of energy, uh, almost like a lightful being. That's also how I was kind of saw myself was just this this like lightful cloak around me. Um and so we were we were walking, getting very anxious, and I started bargaining with him, and that's how he pre he presented himself um, as a, as a male. But there was a, sort of this this also this understanding that you know that was just his preference to me. He could be male or female or anything really. Um, I just perceived him as male, and um, and he and I I, I kind of I was kind of asking him in my mind. I said, "Do I really have to go?" And I had this sort of dread of like, oh man, I've been through this so many times and I know what it's like down there and I know how hard it is down there and I really don't want to leave this beautiful, just blissful space. Like I just wanted to stay here because it's very restful and very beautiful and up there. I mean, you don't have a care in the world there. And um, and he was like, well, we discussed this many times now. You you need to go another time. And I said, well, can this at least be my last time? Like, do I really need to go another time? And he was like, well, it's really up to you. I mean, you know, if, if you do everything that you've uh, that you've you know decided to accomplish on planet Earth, then, you know, maybe this, you know, he was like, it's probably not going to be your last last time. But, it, you know, you could potentially skip over a couple of lifetimes and and take a shortcut and i remember in my essence and in my soul thinking at that time like that's what i want to do i i just want to power through this lifetime because i don't want to have to go back there again and before we knew it we were at this what i can only describe as almost like a helicopter hub so it was round and it was like a vortex and it was swirling in the middle um and and i was standing in the edge of it and I could see and perceive other souls standing with their mentors there as well, who had brought them there too. And I, it was very clear to me that 
those souls were born too. I mean, at that time, I didn't have that concept of I'm being born, but it was sort of cl clear to me that those souls were departing um, too, and that they had gone there to say goodbye to the spiritual realm. And so I was, I was standing there with him, and I, again, I was still bargaining, and I was like, you know, I really... I really don't want to have to go. Can we do anything? Like, can I just stay a couple more minutes or what, you know, minute that there was no time, but like, you know, it kind of felt that way. And he said, well, you know, we already discussed that. He started getting a little bit like lovingly, but a little bit, you know, like a, a father figure, almost like we discussed it. Come on. We know, we know you need to go. And then the last thing before he actually pushed me into the vortex, because he knew I, I wouldn't have gone otherwise, was just remember that we're always here for you. All you need to do is reach out with your mind to us and remember that we're always here for you. And I said, okay. <laughs> so he pushed me and I thought in that moment ah, that, you know, he pushed me down. Again, he pushed me and I fell down the vortex. And so it was like the tunnel, but in reverse. So the tunnel that a lot of people see in their near-death near experiences is what I fell through, but in reverse, almost like a two-way street. And I remember falling through the tunnel and it was a sensation of being sucked into darkness and and thinking like, ah, oh, you know, I remember this from the, the times I was I was dying before. And and then uh, I, I there was this point where suddenly I was sucked into this dimension and I slammed into my body. I remember literally like slamming into my body, taking a breath oh, and then just thinking, oh, here we go again. And being just completely exhausted, landing in my body was awful. It was just like this really like harsh, like rough, you know, I mean, I was like literally slammed. It was like I was slammed into a wall. There was a lot of pain. It was cold. It was bright. And it was just the thought was just here I go again. And and then after that, I kind of fell into just this like dark almost like you know what's the word for it like not amnesia but like you know just uh mm -hmm. I was uh, unconscious I mean I was passed out and my mom will tell you that uh, on the on the other side I was actually two weeks late so I was so late that the doctors were really concerned that I might not be making it that I might actually be a stillbirth which I think is why my my on the spiritual side I was pushed right? Because otherwise I probably wouldn't have made it into this body in this lifetime. And my mom also tells the story that um, in the, I was born in 1987. And at the time, you know, they pushed, they wheeled the babies away. I was born in Switzerland and they wheeled the babies away into this like little, little like nursery place. And there were all these babies screaming, um, you know, the next day when she came to visit me and I was like in the smack in the middle, you know, just sleeping. And there was nothing could wake me up. And I tend to tell her or when I, you know, when I would tell her about it, um, you know, she was, you know, I was like, yeah, of course, mom. You know, I was just exhausted. I didn't want to be here. It was exhausting being here and being in this body again. And so I just slept. And then I have a couple of more memories after that um i have one memory that must have been maybe a couple of days after my birth <clears throat> where i was still very clear um like kind of like now you know my consciousness was still very clear and i remember people like looking over my little bassinet and going like gucci gucci go oh she's so cute and i remember all their faces and thinking why are you talking to me in this baby language i'm like in here and i can hear you well and clear and you don't have to talk to me like this because, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, in sound mind, you can talk to me normally. And, uh, and then, and then after that, I kind of fell into just this, this amnesia. I had little moments uh, in my early, like maybe first year, second year of my life where I had little flashes of memories of past lifetimes, um, a specifically a lifetime I had right before this one, where I was um, a small girl. And uh, and I had two parents who very much loved me, and I and I think they lost me when I was when I was a kid, when I was a child, because I remember that they grieved me a lot, and I remember as a soul kind of lifting out of my body and thinking, oh man, I'm really leaving them grieving. Um, and and the way I remember that was because my mom would come up to me and say, "Your name's Christine. Your name's Christine," and I would think, 
I really don't like this name. I liked my name in the last lifetime much better because it was Lisa or something like that. And and I was like, I like that one much better. And somehow I liked my mommy and, uh, and daddy better there too because they were more loving. <laughs> and um, and and that was kind of like it was almost like my my spirit floating floating into this kind of body lifetime reality. And and realizing, you know, like that now I had this new name and this new identity and kind of coming to terms with that. And I have to tell you that ever since I did and ever since I accepted this experience to have been completely true and real. Um, and ever since I started going down the path that I was always called to do, you know, regardless of what people say, I mean, my family members are very much against what I'm doing and think it's all out there and whatnot, but I'm just, I'm just walking my path. I'm just doing what I need to do. And ever since I am, I, I don't experience depression anymore. I, I feel, a, I feel very, I, I live a very fulfilled and very joyful and very, happy life. I mean, I, you know, don't get me wrong. My father passed away. I still grieve, you know, I, um, you know, my husband and I are trying to make life work. You know, it's, it's still, it's still, life is still going on, but, but the, uh, the darkness that I was in, that's, that's past, that's gone. And I think that when people are experiencing those hard moments, then that's absolutely a, a call for awakening.